Welcome, welcome to Kitchen Home. Space jokes? <laughs> Why, of course. I've got a ton of them. Why did Mixie... Mixie? Why did Mixie Mouse... No. Why did Mickey Mouse go to outer space? To find Pluto. I'm throwing a party in space. Can you help me plan it? Why didn't the sun go to college? Because it already had a million degrees. What do planets like to read? Comet books. I know, I'm an utter butter. Oh, no, I want a candy bar. I guess I could have a Milky Way. Huh? Huh? Okay, just enjoy the show. We're too late. Yes, the lunchbox is packed and everything. Not quite. The last of the Mohicans. My dad used to read this to me as a kid. Just because he has a suitcase with a few trinkets doesn't mean we need to get all the motion. Hey, look at this. Picture of a woman. Why, that synthetic dog. <laughs> Outrageous. Well, Frank, if you and Hotlips can date, anything's possible. I wonder when Maddox took him. Did I? I... Huh. I've never been in here when the lights were on. I'm going to give you the long version of Get Out. You're packing a book? Can you even understand what words mean? Yes. Can you? I thought we could talk this out like a scene from a soap opera. I wish to reassure you of my good intentions by breaking into your quarters. Reality bears little resemblance to the rules. Take games of chance. Games of chance? Yes. Like the one you are playing right now, where you are pretending I am not a sentient being who could deadlift a Ford Ranger if properly motivated. Uh, when I said I wanted to talk this out, I really just wanted you to listen to me and nod. But since you didn't, I'm going to shut you down. Literally. Now to the trance portal. I can't live. Wow, I did not think this through. Well, there's only one way to find out. Find out what, Frank? When Commander Maddox took data. Oh, right, sorry, the cutaway threw me off. Frank, are you going to tell us or are we going to have to use your head to play Parisi squares? Is that anything like 3D chess? Frank? Oh, all right. But you'll be sorry. Trap, can you take him off shuffle? He keeps playing that same old song. Gladly. Oh, what are you looking for? Stop that. I'm tickling. Hey, I wonder if he has an off switch. No, no, we can't deactivate him. He has his rights, too. <laughs> See? I have my rights. Exactly. You have the right to remain silent. Here we are. We can check the time of the kidnapping and their current location by making deductions based on the transporter's last coordinates. Uh, Darmok and Gelada Tanagra. Watch your mouth. When did you have time to learn all of this? It's amazing what you can get done when you're invisible. Well, let's not think too hard about that. Got it. Wow, old invaluable Frank. That's invisible, but you never know how valuable an invisible and valuable Frank could be. Who wants to be the runner? Frank? Oh, no. <laughs> You'll step one foot on that pad and I'll never see you again. Well, as nice as that sounds. Who's going to work the controls? Frank, you're the only one who knows which buttons to press. Sorry, I just got a flashback of nuclear headquarters. Fine, but you better not leave me here. Can I say it? Be my guest. Energize. Yeah, <laughs> made it. You thought you could leave me here, didn't you? Could someone throw a red uniform on Frank before we leave? How long can it take for one mouth to dematerialize? Uh, data? 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 Down, please? Data, the, data, the neighbors are complaining. When I say neighbors, I mean, of course, in the next galaxy. I didn't know he liked Fleetwood Mac. Data, please. I had hoped we could get to know each other better. Sit up on the table there. Ha! I see you're still not talking to me. Well, what are some things you may not know about me? How friendly of you to ask. I keep space plants. Well, house plants. I like my blankets a bit on the scratchy side to keep me alert, and I mull over most things while eating a giant bowl of butterscotch ice cream. Data. Data. Please stop staring out the window. It's time for your pre-op evaluation. You have nothing to worry about. This won't hurt a bit. Ah, so that's how he got that way. Itchy blankets. Yeah, I bet his parents gave him a Brillo pad to cuddle up with at night. If only there was a way to let Data know we're here, that we're us or anything. Who are you and what are you doing in that ridiculous get-up? I'm your assistant. See, I can talk even softer than you can. Funny how that answered none of my questions. You can start by bringing me that tricorder. Oh, no, 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 no. That is standard issue. You need a medical tricorder. It's a machine. It doesn't require a medical tricorder. Thursday, as a matter of fact, no. I am at the top of the cybernetics division. Do you know I hold the associate chair of robotics? Well, put it down and let's get to work. You're in my space. Your space? What a big head you have. Oh, I don't mean I own all of space. You're in my way. Always your way, huh? Well, 
couldn't possibly be in your way because I'm the one that's doing the procedure. But what procedure? You haven't done anything yet. That's because you're in my way. Now, hand me the tricorder I asked for. You really want it? Yes, give it to me. Wait, I've seen this done before on a late show with meringue pie. I thought you liked butterscotch ice cream. Hey, James Mason, just hand me the tricorder. That's not a tricorder, that's a delta wave inducer. Well, what difference does it make? You weren't going to use a proper instrument anyway. In fact, you're going about this all wrong. I didn't come here for your opinion. Eh? Why did you come here? How do you do it? I work here, which is probably more than I can say for you. It's like you escaped from an insane asylum and had a kind enough face that no one wanted to bring it up to you. Same goes for you, except for the face thing. I usually don't lose my temper, but for you, oh, really? I mean, who loses it for you? Starfleet, perhaps. Hmm? What, what? Am I right, Data? Don't wait for a reply. He isn't talking. No? I think he's saying a lot. Just by sitting here, staring at you. Wonder. Okay, for the last time, Data doesn't have feelings. Yes, there's a lot of that going around. Ah, uh, oh, right. I, of course, the cold, unfeeling scientist. Tell me when I haven't heard. As you wish. So, two nanites are floating in a petri dish. And one says to the other, Fine, have it your way. It's half full. Still not ideal, is it? Get out. But, he looked at me. He saw us. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Hey, you don't think he... Perhaps you would like to hear a poem. I have a good one here. Sure, Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the ends and spice the hems, and Dr. Debbie would scream and shout. She simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceiling. Coffee crowns, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can and covered the floor, cracked the window, it blocked the door with bacon rinds, chicken bones, and trippy ends of ice cream cones. Prune pits, peach pits, all peeled. Globby globs of golden meal, pizza crust, and with it green, soaky beans, and tangerines. Crust the plant on top of those grisly bits of peepee rolls. The garbage rolls went down the hall, they raised the roof, and broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, lots of gold bubble gum. Cellophane with green bologna, rubbery, blubbery macaroni, and peanut butter cake, and dry curdled milk, and custard pie, molded melons, dried up mustard eggs, just mixed with lemon custard. Cold french fries and rancid meat and yellow lumps of cream of wheat. <gasps> At last the garbage reached so high that it finally touched the sky. And all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come and play. And finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, Okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate. And then the garbage treated hate poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot now relate because the hour is much too late. But children remember, Sarah Stout. And always take the garbage out. Okay, that's two minutes of my life I'm never going to get back. I'm going to get security. Like a blanket? Like a firing squad. Hey, is he from the Enterprise? Oh, wait. I don't recognize that uniform. Uniform? Look at his face. Well, he's rather attractive, but first of all, you're married. Second of all, Danny Kay. You must think I was born yesterday. Yeah, and then you fell off the turnip truck. That is Danny Kay. And just what would Mr. Kay be doing at the Daystrom Institute? I know we said that Bruce was going to beam Data to the Starbase, but I guess he beamed him here, even further away. Well, let's find out. I sure didn't like seeing Data like that. Do you suppose they dragged him? No, possibly. Try and keep up, wouldn't you? You can see us? I mean, hear us? Well, then we must apologize for Frank. How did you get mixed up in all of this? Please have your questions for the end of the hole. I don't want to be seen talking goodbye. Hi. Vice Admiral, nice weather we're having. I hate the outside. Give me four walls, dull carpeting, and two close-together chairs. Any day. Ooh, well, enjoy another vacuum seal day then. We demand answers. Oh boy, well then I demand patience. He's a cube. He must be. He's in a dimension between ours and theirs. His quick changes, his unruly hair. He's a cube, all right. I'm just gonna skip over the fact that you just described every entertainer who ever lived. A uh, who? He's Q. Frank, you can't believe everything you read. Maybe he's not even on our side. Yeah, I always wanted to be somebody, but now I realize I should have been more specific. I don't know what I'm doing here any more than you do. But whomever and whatever is messing around with dimensional space is sure going to be sorry when they realize who they sucked in. I got here maybe three days ago. I've kept my eye on Mr. Data ever since he got here. I took a peek at his file. I'm not, I don't want to go into that, but he, he must be returned to his crew. I know that. He's like a child. A little child. What's your plan? You three can help me and nobody will see you. It's perfect. Well, I'm seriously thinking of trusting him, are you? We, we don't know anything about him. Remember when I asked for your opinion? Yeah, me neither. Besides, if you can't trust Danny Kane in a blue space jumpsuit trying to rescue an android in an alternate dimension, all of our lives have no meaning. Well, you know, I guess he would be the perfect one for sneaking around. I mean, he's so light on his feet. 
Did you see him in his last picture? Like he was dancing on air. Oh, you know, if I'm accused of floating one more time, I'm going to be burned for being a witch. All right, how are we going to get Data out of here and back onto the Enterprise? Well, we can't use the transporter. They'll find us. Danny, you wouldn't be holding out on us, would you? Who, me? No, no. Why are you making a meal of your left thumb? Well, I can drive a shuttle. Ish. Well, let's get this ish started. Well, I'd like to end the show with one last space joke. How do you know when the moon is going broke? When it's down to its last quarter. Until next time, this has been Kitchen Home. Bye! By the way, it may have seemed random, random, random in there, but my mom used to read me the garbage poem by Shel Silverstein when I was little. Or so. Context.